I'd been sent to Korea from my university a few years ago. They told me for my major I had to go somewhere in Asia, and my friend had really talked up Korea for me. I knew nothing about it, but I decided, what the hell, and I embarked on a semester-long trip. I had only one serious boyfriend in my life, though I had broken up with a few months prior. I also don't enjoy one-night stands and wasn't digging the dudes at the clubs in Seoul, but I still wanted to have some sort of romantic experience, I suppose. So my friend recommended I use this dating app to meet English-speaking Koreans. That way I could meet someone and experience the actual dating culture. I thought, I'm young, so why not? I was just so eager to have new experiences. Maybe it sounds dumb to try dating in a foreign country, but it worked out for me, eventually. Just not the first date. I met him on a dating app after being in Seoul for about three weeks. Let's call him Tim. I still don't know the culture or city very well and was a bit naive about everything. He eagerly wanted to meet for a date after talking to me and he seemed pretty nice. I should have asked more questions and I should have noticed that he was not giving me many details about himself. Tim was a guy a bit older than me, but claimed he was a college student. I assumed he had done his military time, all men in Korea have to do this, and returned to school. We talked for a bit and decided to meet for a tea date near the school I went to. He wanted to come to my dorm originally to pick me up. But I live in an all-women's dorm and I didn't want him to know exactly where I lived since we are still strangers. So instead I insisted we meet at the main tower center near the subway. He really didn't like this idea, which looking back was a huge red flag. But eventually I insisted. The night of the date, I waited an hour for this guy. He was very late. Tim weirdly claimed he just wanted to make me wait. I thought he was kidding and messaged him a laughing emoji, assuming he was just lost. When he finally arrived, he was much smaller than I thought, but a man's height has never been something I care about much. He was also quite thin. Maybe I let my guard down because I didn't see him as a physical threat to me, which was a mistake in the end. Right off the bat, he was way too touchy with me and breathe creepy and heavy. I was so off-put with his demeanor, I'm usually very tolerant with different personality types, but this was very odd to me. I had been told that Korean men would be polite and not so touchy on the first date. He was also dressed oddly, like in business attire for a date, but I thought that maybe it's just a Korean thing. Again, I was dumb and knew jack squat about the culture, then the first thing he said to me was, You're not as white as I thought you were. I thought this was a translation error, but his English was near perfect. So I asked for clarification, and he said what he meant. I thought you would be more white. Your skin is darker than I thought, and your eyes aren't as green. Are you pure European? Now I was officially weirded out. First of all, I'm pretty much as white as you can get. I'm Irish and Scandinavian, so white as hell basically, so the fact he thought I could have possibly been any whiter was funny. And why did he care in the first place anyway? Why does my skin color matter to this guy, and why is he bringing it up? He said about three times on the date how he wished I had greener eyes, and every time I would just reply, well maybe my online photos make me look brighter and brushed it off as him being nervous and trying to start a conversation with me. Isn't it funny the dumb excuses you make for people when you're in a panic? When we arrived at the tea place, I tried to order a basic raspberry tea, and he stopped me and told me I had to have this special tea. I thought it was weird he wanted to choose my tea for me, but in my head I brushed it off once again. He really insisted I drink only this tea type, and I just agreed. These small details become weirder later. After tea he asked if we could look around my school. It was dark but the school is very well lit, so I agreed. And the whole time we walked around, he would randomly stop and grab me for long hugs. At first, 
I let it happen, but then I stopped him and he just kept trying. He kept grabbing me and breathing hard into my neck. It was so awkward. He also would not tell me any personal details about himself. I asked so many questions, desperately trying to distract from all the awkward grabbing and to try and get to know him, but he would never tell me anything. He even said at one point, I'm a mysterious man, like a movie line. He also said something like, you look so much like my favorite movie character, and I asked who, but he said that I would have to figure it out on my own. Finally, he said, I want to go to a dark area, and in my head I screamed, hell no. At this point I wanted the date over fast. He somehow knew there was a wooded area behind my campus and said that we should go there. I said no and that I wanted to stay near the main campus in town, but he kept pushing. Finally he grabbed my arm and started dragging me there. He said, I can't let anyone see, and I started to panic. I finally ripped my arm away and just demanded we leave and go back to the main road immediately. Looking back, I don't know why I didn't ask for help or get angry. Maybe I was scared, but I just began to book it back to the main road, and he followed me. We ended up in front of a hospital near the center of town, and I told him it was time for him to go. I made some excuse, and he was pleading with me to stay. I told him we could meet the next day. I lied, and I would message him. I just wanted to get away at this point. I was pretending it was all okay, just so he would leave me. Suddenly, I think he's leaning in to kiss me, and I immediately think, oh god no, but it was so much worse. Instead, I feel my pain in my face. It takes me a second to realize, he was biting my face. It was like a dog. I never felt this sensation before. He leaned his head sideways and bit me on my nose and cheek as hard as he could. I screamed and pushed him away from me now. His face looked so freaky and I barely had time to react in words. So instead I ran up the sidewalk until I saw a convenience store on the right. I ran to the back of the store and bent down to start crying. The man who owned the store started to yell at me, but I couldn't explain my situation. I just begged him in English to let me stay and I ended up having to buy a popsicle to stick around. God. I wish I had learned some Korean by then. I guess Tim didn't follow me though. So I peered outside the store and I didn't see him. I then texted a friend and waited for them to get to me to take me back to my dorm. On the way I messaged Tim and basically told him to stay away from me. I told him he was a creep, that he shouldn't bite women and that something along the lines of me calling the police and then I blocked him. I was so scared to walk around my school area after that. I was so afraid he would somehow find me. I am so thankful though. I never let him pick me up at my dorm. I called my mom to tell her what happened when suddenly she said, Wait, what did he ask you? She then put some details together and realized that all these weird things had to do with the Fifty Shades of Grey books. At first I thought she was just being silly and overthinking a bad date. I thought she was joking, but oh god she was right. She had recently seen the movie or read the book of something and knew the details. The eye color and the way he dressed and the tea he made me drink and the random lines he said, it all matches the books and movies. This all for his dirty little fantasy. My mom thinks he picked me up because I look like the girl in that movie to him. It explains why he was so fixated on my appearance and this whole thing with abiding and trying to dominate me, even if it wasn't his intention. I later learned that there are some few creeps who seek out foreign girls to dominate and have sex with them as like a prize. They call it riding the white horse, or something along those lines. On a happier note, this bad experience didn't stop me. I eventually met someone else in Korea, and we ended up falling in love. We even did the whole long distance thing and now I'm living in Korea and studying and working. I am hoping to marry soon. So I guess I didn't let bad creepy guy stop my life. As for Tim, 
let's not meet. It's been years, but I will still kick your ass if I see you, and I won't have to bite. This is a story from a few years ago, when I was in my last year of college. I was taking a history class that I loved, and it just so happened that my good friend Amelia was in that class too. Of course, we sat next to one another. The class was taught by a very popular professor, so there were a good deal of people in it. At the time, I was a smoker, as was my friend Amelia, so we made a habit of sharing cigarettes together after class. Around the same time, I was starting to befriend another person, Rachel. She and I didn't take any classes together, but she lived with another good friend of mine. So we started to get to know one another. Rachel and I would do homework together, hang out outside of the library together on study breaks, and so on. Amelia met Rachel separately, and before long the three of us became a little trio of sorts. About a month after we all became friends with Rachel, this boy from Amelia and I's class started saying hello to us during our cigarette breaks. He would make little comments here and there about things we learned in class, and would ask us how we were doing on our papers and such. Eventually, we learned his name was Ryan, and Ryan became a fixture in our cigarette ritual. After a little while, Amelia and I noticed that Ryan was asking a lot of questions about our daily schedules. At first, we thought he was just trying to get to know us and our interests, but his questions were getting very specific. What times did we go to the library? When did we study in places other than the library? Who did we like to study with? He was this normally smiley and friendly self the whole time, but the subject matter of his questions were just off. We thought perhaps he was just being a bit socially awkward. A lot of people at our school, well known for being full of eccentric students, were, well, very eccentric. It wasn't terribly uncommon to encounter someone who acted a bit differently than the norm. We let it slide. Ryan started asking Amelia and I to hang out outside of class. He wanted to tag along in what we usually did, but Amelia and I were both unusually busy at the time and it kept not working out with our schedules. He kept asking every day after class though, and we noticed he was getting less happy and significantly more irritated as time continued on. Amelia and I both agreed that he was starting to make us uncomfortable, though we couldn't quite put our fingers on why. One day, Rachel met Amelia and I at her dormitory, saying she had something serious she needed to speak to us about. When we got there, we settled onto a bench and got talking. Rachel told us that she had recently gotten out of a terribly abusive relationship with a boy who hit her, sexually assaulted her, and took general pleasure in her misery. Around the time we had met Rachel, she had begun the process of reporting him to campus authorities in an attempt to have him removed from campus. A temporary no-contact order had been put into place between the two of them, and Rachel told us that she had just been moved into the dorm she was living in so that he wouldn't know where she lived. She also found out that her ex was attempting to befriend the people she knew in an attempt to find out where she was living, where she spent her time, and what she liked to do, and when. She wanted to warn us in case he approached us, so that we could keep our distance and not reveal any information about her routines. She told us his name, and his name was Ryan. Amelia and I both looked at each other in shock. To confirm, we asked Rachel to describe what he looked like, and she described our new cigarette buddy and classmate to a frickin' T. We immediately informed Rachel about the interactions we had been having with Ryan, and Rachel informed us that we were the fifth and sixth people she had confirmed that Ryan was attempting to make contact with. Of course, we immediately started avoiding him, switching up our routines to make sure we left the area immediately after class ended. A few weeks later, Ryan stopped showing up to class. Neither of us ever saw him again. A few weeks after that, Rachel informed Amelia and I that Ryan had been expelled from school. He had sexually assaulted another student at a party 
and when they went to collect evidence from his dorm room, they found a detailed ledger of information that he had collected about Rachel and pieces of writing about all the horrendous things he wanted to do to her. I'm not entirely sure what happened to him, but in case the message was not clear. No, Ryan. Let's not meet. This is my first post. I know this one isn't as intense as others, but I wanted to share my story anyway. For a little bit of context, my first semester of freshman year in college, I had a history class at 9am. The class had at least 50 people, but I literally knew no one. I was fine with that however. The lectures were actually interesting. We had minimal homework, and the class wasn't hard at all. I sat towards the back of the class, semi-important. So one day out of nowhere I got an email on my college email account. It was some random guy that was like, Hey, I'm Joe. I'm in your history. How do you like the class? Or something along those lines. I thought this was really creepy because not only did I have no idea who Joe was, but also, who the heck uses a school email to start talking to someone? I got his name from the email account and I decided to look him up on Facebook. Our college uses Facebook for basically everything, thinking maybe I knew this guy or something. That's when I discovered that about two weeks before the email, he had requested to be my friend on Facebook and I hadn't responded because I had no idea who he was. He had also messaged me 11 times and Facebook called me. Well okay, what the hell? So I spoke to my roommate and her friend that night about it. They basically told me I should just message him and tell him I'm not interested. I Facebook messaged him back and I basically told him, no thank you. He seemed to get the message and it was fine. I then looked for him in class next Monday and realized that he sat about four rows in front of me, near the middle of the class. He would fully turn to stare at me throughout the class and I considered telling the professor because he made me so uncomfortable. Thankfully, we only had a couple of weeks left. After the class was over, I figured I wouldn't see him again. Different majors, he was older, etc. And I didn't really think about him. I had a math class on the other side of campus next semester. Now, I could have taken the trolley, sure, but I normally like to take the 15 minute walk to get there. One day, as I walked into the building, I saw Joe walking out. I basically opened the door to go in as he was standing there, about to leave. He didn't even move and just stared at me, waiting for me to walk past him. By the way, he was easily six foot tall and huge. His demeanor really made me feel weird, but I pushed past him and went into class. When the class was over, I walked out to head back to my dorm when I saw Joe just hanging around the building alone. I started walking and he began walking like six feet behind me. Okay, weird, but maybe he's just going somewhere. After a couple of minutes, I got more and more nervous about him and I spotted two of my roommate's friends in front of me walking to their dorm as well. I literally inserted myself into their conversation and I was just like, Hi, I know you barely know me, but please walk with me, I'm being followed, and they were cool about it. He continued to follow us until we came to a crosswalk. He walked past us, turning to stare directly at me, and the look he gave me freaked out the two girls I was with so much that they suggested we take the long way back to our rooms. We did, and despite the fact that we should have seen him again on this path, we didn't. The weirdest part of all of this is, why was he hanging around the building? He had been walking out as I went in. My class was over an hour, so he should have been long gone by then. The only restaurant on that side of the campus was closed by then, and if he had a class, he would have still been in it, and I got out a couple of minutes early. So, was he literally just waiting for me to leave? I honestly don't really want to know. But regardless, Joe, let's not meet again. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. If you haven't already done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it 
so you can be notified of any and all future scary stories narration videos coming here to the Creepy Fox YouTube channel. I'm sure you're going to enjoy your stay. Now, let's continue on with these scary stories. I was a senior going to a pretty well-respected community college near my hometown. One of my classes was an intensive public speaking course with a professor that I adored. At the start of the semester in this class, nothing was out of the ordinary. My classmates and I either got along or kept to ourselves. We were all adults after all. This was my last class of the day, so I would often have up to an hour to kill before and would always look for a quiet, comfy nook to either study, work on assignments, or watch YouTube videos. One day, I was working on a paper in a nook near my public speaking class. When I noticed this guy from said class standing at the entrance to the little lobby, staring at me, I just ignored it because I was busy. He walked over and stood above me, staring until I acknowledged him with a hello. He proceeded to take a seat near me and started asking me really mundane questions about the weather and our class. I humored him but eventually said I was trying to work on a paper and would like to be left alone. He just went silent and sat, watching me, until it was time for our class. He walked with me, despite me not making eye contact or engaging with him in any way. Our classroom was set up in a way where each row has one solid desk on a big step, each one higher than one in front, like stairs. I'm so sorry, I don't know what it's called and I'm sure there's a name for it. This guy sat below me, so when I noticed he had turned around in his seat to stare at me, a lot of other people did too. It was very obvious. I chose to ignore this behavior at first, but I started to notice him everywhere. This campus wasn't huge, but it certainly had enough tiny study spaces and nooks that a person could easily hide away from others. That was the whole point of the study nooks. Still, he would always be around, no matter where I went, watching me. The incident that first made me report him was on a presentation day for our class. He found me in a computer lab where I sat with a couple of friends, but was unfortunately not sitting between any of them. So this guy, who I'll call Noah from now, walked up next to me, making sure his crotch was close to my face and asked if I'm ready to give my speech. I said yes, and I'm trying to work on last minute changes to the outline. He then pulled a leather belt out of his backpack and scooting a tad closer to me, started putting his belt on and saying, look, I got a new belt for this speech. When I just nodded and went back to working on my outline, he said, watch this, and scooted so close, my ear brushed his pants when I turned my head. I was mortified and instinctively scooted my chair away, which made my friends look over at what was going on. One of them asked me what was up, and I told them nothing. Noah eventually walked away after getting his belt on, and then I told everyone what happened. My friend Nicole told me to report him after I explained his other behavior. After class that day, I did. I went to the student advocate and told her everything that happened, that I was uncomfortable, and asked what I could do. She told me, you know, I think he may be on the spectrum or just socially awkward. Have you tried getting to know him? I told her I didn't want to get to know him and that I shouldn't have to befriend people who make me uncomfortable, even if they are on the spectrum or socially awkward. She said she would take what I said into consideration and only to come back if he did anything actually worth reporting, since sticking your junk in someone's face is apparently not any form of harassment. So, Noah kept following me, appearing wherever I was. Sometimes he would try to talk to me. Sometimes he would just watch me. He followed me through the parking lot to my car one time. He stared at me in class too. He tried talking to people he knew were my friends to try get involved with conversations with me when they were hanging out with me. 
After class one day, I decided to go to the McDonald's near campus to grab dinner on my way from home that day. I decided to go inside because I used to have a thing about drive throughs for some reason. As I was waiting for my food, the girl who took my order came up to the counter and called me over. She asked, Do you know that guy? I turned to my right and Noah had pulled his car up next to the glass wall where the drive through line was supposed to be, except there are no cars in front of him and he's 50 feet behind the menu and speaker staring at me. As soon as I made eye contact with him, he backed his car up and began pulling into the parking space to the left of my car. My stomach dropped. Now he had followed me off of campus. My face must have went pale because the girl looked concerned and I told her exactly what was happening, that Noah was stalking me on campus and now he was here. This girl, honestly my hero, said, Okay, I'm going to rush your order. If you feel unsafe and he starts heading in here, I will hide you in the back and call the police. Just as she got my food to the counter, Noah got out of his car and started walking towards the entrance. I told the girl that I was just going to put my head down and rush past him, get in my car, and get out of here. She told me to be safe. I walked with a purpose out of the McDonald's, walked straight past Noah. He started trying to talk to me and follow me to my car, so I ran, got in, locked the doors and pulled out. I looked in my mirrors the entire way home, scanning, scared I'd see his car behind me. Luckily, he didn't follow me home. The next day, I told my friend Nicole what had happened and that I wasn't sure if I could report it because of what the student advocate had said. She was appalled and said that she would go with me to report. We sat down and I told the student advocate everything that had happened since the last time I reported him. Her response was that I was overreacting and that she would document my report but wouldn't grant me a campus restraining order against him. She left me with a, if he does something to you, touches you, hurts you, then we can investigate and get the police involved for a restraining order. Nicole and I were angry and I felt so defeated. We went to talk to our mutual friend Amanda about it and found out he was being creepy to her as well, to the point he had followed her to her car and wouldn't let her leave until she talked to him. I guess when he wasn't following me around, he was following her. She said she hadn't reported it because she didn't think anyone would take her seriously. She also said another friend of hers was stalked by him for a few months the previous semester to the point her friend had dropped the class that they had taken together to throw off his knowledge of her schedule because the student advocate wouldn't help her either. The next day, all three of us, Nicole, Amanda and I, went to the student advocate to show he was doing this to more than one person and he had actually kept Amanda from leaving. The student advocate finally decided to start an investigation but unfortunately all of us were graduating soon by that point and never saw the outcome of the investigation. Edit. I did try to talk to campus police first. The officer I spoke to told me that the process for my type of situation was to talk to the student advocate first who would then determine if it was worth filing a report and taking action. The investigation involved the student advocate talking to Noah and my professor and to Noah himself. It didn't involve the police whatsoever, though I wish it had. So this happened at my college years back. I went to a college that was integrated into a big city, so even though there was a campus, there were plenty of shops, back streets, public transportation, and just regular people walking around. So, I was part of a club that went late into the night. I usually only stayed till 9 to 9.30 p.m. and would then leave, usually with a friend. The club was in the center of campus while I lived east of it, so a 15 to 20 minute walk. This was a foggy late fall slash early winter night. My friend had left early because they weren't feeling well. I ended up staying late 
and began my walk close to 10.30 p.m., so I started walking down a back street that was quiet but led right to my dorm. It was after a few minutes that I heard footsteps somewhere behind me. I stopped, thinking it was a jogger, and moved to the side to let them pass me, but then I noticed that there was no one coming and the footsteps had stopped. I shrugged and started walking. Then the footsteps started up again. I stopped, and it stopped. I started to get a bad feeling and quickly walked to a side street that connected the back street to a much larger main street. The street had a lot of lights, plenty of cars, and still a good number of people on it. I walked back to my dorm from there. Next morning, I woke up and I checked my emails. One was from the campus alert system. Apparently, an hour after I got back to the dorm, someone was stabbed on the back street. The victim was rushed to the hospital, and luckily they survived, saying that the perpetrator followed them down the back street before stabbing them. The perpetrator never got caught, but I have no doubt that that was the person who tried to follow me. I'm so glad I trusted my gut. After that, I made sure to never stay at the club past 9.30 and to always leave with someone who was at least walking in the same direction as me. Junior year of college, this random guy approached me and a friend working at a booth at an activities fair and asked us to help get in contact with this buddy of his that he was supposed to go camping with. Mind you, this was winter in New Hampshire, so really cold, so it was already starting to sound sketchy. Not only was the guy not a student at my university, but he didn't know the name of this guy he was supposed to go camping with, nor did he know the phone number. He said something to the effect of, Oh, I was supposed to pick him up this morning and give him and his girlfriend a ride to the campsite, but she's not picking up her phone. Can you help me find them? He kind of knew her name. Kept saying it was something like this name or something like another name. I was mad creeped out, but pretended to help nonetheless as my friend seemed okay. He tried guessing the name of his male friend, but all the information he really had was the girl's name. His main goal in all of this was to figure out where he could find these people he said he was trying to get into a building where he thought they were, and he couldn't because it was locked. You cannot get into residence halls on my campus without a student ID. He even hinted that he was hoping one of us could help him get into a building, but we shrugged it off with, Oh, we wish we could help more, but we are stuck here until 2pm. After we failed to help him, we directed him towards the dining hall because we had no idea where else to send him, and he walked out of the building, and my friend and I looked at each other, and both were like, holy smokes, did you get freaked out by him too? I firmly believe that he was an abusive slash jealous ex, trying to find out where his ex-girlfriend and new boyfriend were. I really try not to judge someone before I know them, but something really just wasn't right with him, you know? P.S. This guy was 100% the Ted Bundy type. He had piercing turquoise blue eyes, was very handsome, had charming mannerisms, and a striking jawline. TLDR. Guy with serious Ted Bundy vibes. Try to get my friend and I to find where a random person lived. Alright, so for background... I'm a first year student at a large tech university. Our biggest rival is the state university, since everyone and their mother goes to the state university. I have a lot of friends from high school scattered around campus, and I keep in contact with them pretty regularly. They've been asking me to go and party with them, and I had to refuse because it wasn't feasible for me to take a weekend off from homework, etc. So anyway, Rivalry week rolls around, and I figure now is the perfect time to visit the state school. I'm out for break and don't have any responsibilities, so I start asking around to see if there's any futons I can crash on, and one of my friends, a guy, Robert, offers his dorm. 
I have known this guy for several years and I feel I can trust him, so I take him up on the offer. Robert is a really great host. He walks me to his dorm and helps me get all set up, and then, like college students do, he opens a handle of Everclear and we get to putting a dent in it. Halfway through the night, Robert leaves to go to the bathroom. A minute later, the room door opens. I don't pay too much attention because I'm reading something with my back to the door, but after a while, I notice Robert hasn't said anything. When I turn around, I find his roommate, Michael, standing in the doorway, staring at me. Pretty weird, but I give him the benefit of the doubt. I introduce myself, and I apologize for intruding. He says it's alright, and immediately hops into the lofted bed to sit and talk. Robert comes back, and for a while we're all talking and drinking and having fun. I'm sitting on the futon beneath Robert's bed. Robert is sitting on a chair, and Michael is in his bed. But then Robert leaves again to take a shower. As soon as Robert leaves the room, Michael drops out of bed and is on the futon with me in two seconds. He has his arm around me and is uncomfortably close. I immediately shake his arm off my shoulders and I tell him how inappropriate that was. He responds, Yeah? Oh well, and puts his arm back around me. But this time he's also leaning in, trying to kiss me. He manages to get his tongue halfway down my throat before Robert comes back in and Michael immediately disengages and then he puts his head on my lap to look inconspicuous. I can tell Robert thinks this is weird, but he doesn't say anything. I don't say anything because I know it's too late to find another dorm to sleep in for the night. Michael now returns to his bed. After a while, it's time to go to bed. I bundle myself in in a blanket and say goodnight to Robert and lay down with my back to Michael. But as soon as the lights are off and Robert is in bed, Michael slides onto the futon and puts his arm around my waist. I feign sleepness and try to push him off, but in reality, I'm really freaked out. Michael leans in and whispers to me, I think Robert is still awake, but maybe I'll come back once he's asleep. Wouldn't you like that? I say that no, I wouldn't like that, but he just laughs and keeps his arm wrapped around me. After a second, I forcibly remove it and scoot as far away from him as possible. He pats my behind a few times before finally taking the hint and getting into his own bed. Most of that night I was lying awake terrified that he was going to try and dress me literally under my friend's nose. The next morning I woke up and dressed before either of them woke up and headed out to find a different, more responsible friend with a less creepy roommate. But all throughout that day, Michael kept finding more and more of my social media, asking me where I was and if I was coming back. No creepy roommate, I'm not coming back. In fact, let's never meet again. So this is my first time posting anything to reddit, but after going through countless stories here, it hit me. I was 18 at the time, 19 as of recently, and I had started my first semester of college. Now I wasn't dating anyone or had a particular interest in anyone at my college, so I didn't give off the vibe to anyone that I was looking for a relationship. Staying close to my friends in the little building we hang out at between classes, I noticed this guy that always acted really bizarre coming down the stairs of the building. He would do this weird routine of stopping halfway down the stairs and then looking around like a machine rotating his head around to look at everyone in the room. I didn't think much of this, just assuming he was new like I was and just looking for someone friendly enough to sit with or something. But then I noticed that after he looked around the room, he would continue down the stairs and sit by himself, thinking to myself at the time, oh well maybe he just didn't see anyone to sit with. Normal, right? Wrong. A few weeks go by and I still would sit in the same spot with my friends, just talking or eating, being normal college kids. I noticed the guy coming down the stairs again, 
By this point, I had realized he didn't seem to own any other clothes or jackets other than what he had worn the first time I noticed him. Just dark clothes, no print, no logos, but always the same brown leather jacket. He came down the stairs, eyes wide just like last time, scoped out the room. Only this time he made eye contact with me. Nothing I worried about, common awkward eye contact with the stranger. He sat down by himself again, just like normal and the day went on as usual. One of my classes had been cancelled, so I just stayed in the same spot while all my friends got up to go to class or to lunch. I stayed and surfed the internet or texted anyone who was awake at the time. People in the seats around me were other kids just waiting until class or to eat something. Nothing noteworthy. While all this was going on around me, I noticed that guy actually staring at me. I definitely got some bad vibes from it, considering his eyes were huge and he hadn't seemed to make any friends, at least any friends that would sit with him anyway. Thankfully, some friends showed up and sat with me. I told them about the guy who seemed to still be looking at me, but lessened to intensity from daggers to just slightly awkward. They laughed and just made the joke of, you've got a new boyfriend, which didn't make me feel too thrilled to hear after getting the creeper sense from this guy. The next semester rolls around after break that relaxed my mind from the stress of college and the creeper, only to come back to it way worse. In the same week as the new semester, I had been placed in the earliest class that was available at 8 in the morning. I was usually at school before the sun had a chance to make it light outside around the place, which made it way worse seeing that guy sitting in my friend's usual chill spot. My couple friends and I sit down, waiting to start the day, when my oldest friend decides to talk to the guy. How are you this morning, sir? She has ADHD and her medicine hadn't kicked in yet. Oh, well, I'm alright. How are you, lovely ladies? He actually looked directly at me when he asked this. I didn't answer or notice the rest of the conversation, as I was getting up to go to class at the time, hoping he wouldn't follow me. He did. I walked quickly to get through the cold and to get away from him. He just seemed to stay at his own creepy pace, looking directly at me as he walked. I turned a corner to get to the building my class was in, only to see him walk by looking right at me. No smile, no expression at all, just creepy. The weeks ended up going by, with the same make eye contact, walk down the stairs, stare at me deal continuing. It didn't get worse so much as it just continued to get creepy. Nearing the days of our finals and my friends still making jokes about the creepy guy, now making it obvious to them, just looking at me, he did one of the most frightening things to my little 18 year old body and mind. I was alone again in our usual chill spot, same old looking at my phone screen until time to leave when I noticed a really bright light just shining every few seconds. It didn't surprise me that it was a reflection of something, with the sun being behind me, anything shiny would have caused this. But the only reason I knew it was the creepy guy was because after a few seconds of realizing the reflection was moving, well, I looked to see that it was a mirror. The guy has a frickin' mirror in his hands. He was looking into the mirror with those huge creepy eyes at me. I saw him. He saw me. He didn't move or put it away at all. He was almost playing a game with me of see how long we can stare at each other through this damn mirror. I only stared for so long to try and comprehend what was happening. I stopped looking at the guy and went back to whatever I was doing, hoping a friend would come sit with me and break the awkwardness. Hell, even a stranger sitting next to me would have been welcomed. After sitting for a while with the creeps, I got up to go to the bathroom or get food. I can't remember. I didn't take my stuff with me. No one ever steals anything or moves anything. 
College students here have an unwritten role of watching over each other's things. I come back to my stuff, sit down, get comfortable for only moments, to then come to the realization the guy had moved closer to me. He got up and moved everything noticeably closer to me. Okay, this was the creepiest day for him so far. He had a staring contest with me in a mirror and moved closer to me when I'd gotten up. I wish I could say it stopped there, but after him moving closer, the staring got worse. He was now facing me, complete with his body turned toward me and everything. He didn't stop looking at me when I made it clear I saw him. I would look down again at my phone, only to read text messages from the friend who was just seconds away from coming to get me to take us home. That was the creepiest first year of college for me, and I really hope I never have to experience him just staring at me like that again. I am actually scared of what would have happened if I had been there this semester a day longer. The best part about college was living in the dorm. The dorm itself was actually just an old Howard Johnson hotel that was falling apart. Literally, the bricks on the outside of the building would fall off. I lived there for two years and worked there a year after I moved out. During my second year, I became an RA, residence advisor. There were six floors to the building. And without any of the creepy things that happened in there, it was just creepy to be in or look at. I would always get spooked out having to do rounds alone at night. But in between rounds, we would hang out in the RA office and play Mario Kart, do arts and crafts, and play pool. It was a lot of fun. There was this guy who would always come in on my shifts and hang out. Since I lived and worked there, I try to be friends with everyone. I learned that his parents were rich. He had a sister who was a Wiccan, and they were all Freemasons, which made no difference to me because he seemed nice. One night I was locking up the RA office to hang out at the front desk instead. No one was around, and it was pretty late. As I went to leave the office, my new friend came and pushed his way into the office and sat down in a chair and was slowly spinning from side to side. He didn't say anything just sat there. I told him I was closing up, but we could hang out at the front desk with the girl working. Silence. I started to tell him I was tired and not in the mood for his joke, and I just wanted to go. He just looked at me, not saying a word, slight smile on his face. At this point, I felt a little uneasy and didn't know what to say. This was not in our training. I know what scares you. I know who scares you too, he said. Yep, I was scared and I radio for the front desk girl to come to the office. Now, the front desk isn't far from the office at all, but when leaving the front desk, you have to lock it up, so it took some time and we were just there in silence. He gets up and starts to leave, but before he does, he says, lost souls are easy to tame, and then went to the elevator and up to his room. That was the last time I remember seeing him, but other students would complain about him walking the hallways at night and touching people's doors. One of my co-workers told me that he came into the office when he was working and asked for me. My co-worker said I wasn't working tonight, but invited him to hang out and play Mario Kart, and he said he was only interested in me. There were other rumors about him that freaked me out. He only stayed for a semester and I have no idea what happened to him afterwards. In the three years of living or working in that building, a lot of weird things have happened. It was also where Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka met. Hello everyone, thank you for listening to the Creepy Fox Podcast. If this is the first time you've joined us, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it. That way you'll be notified of any and all future uploads coming here to the Creepy Fox. Also, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like rating and a comment down below telling me what you all thought. And make sure to pick up some Creepy Fox merchandise if you like. That's available right below the video player. 
Now I'd like to go ahead and give a very special thank you to all our channel members. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Linz, Maribel, Medu Saltil, Dread Archive, Sean, Jen, Corey, and Sylvia. Thank you, of course, to all the regular viewers who constantly tune in and listen to the videos and share them with family and friends. It really does go a long way to help out the Creepy Fox family grow. Speaking of that, if you'd like to go ahead and share your own story for a future episode, then make sure to send it in using the user submissions email on screen. That's tcfnarrations at gmail.com. As you saw today, we did go ahead and feature some stories from Reddit. I have discussed this in the past, and because I want to go ahead and give you guys more videos without you having to wait forever for new uploads, I'll be going ahead and including stories from Reddit, along with the scary stories that subscribers send. Thank you for understanding. So, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll catch you all on the next episode. Until then, take care, and have yourself an amazing day.